What about coffee? Coffee's, uh, coffee always comes up. People are very uh, divided, seemingly, about coffee. I would say most people like them, but then you, find, you do find some that have very strong sort of uh, opinions against coffee, that it's not good necessarily for the adrenals and whatnot. What's your position there? I have a strong opinion about coffee. I love it. <laughs> uh, somebody offers me a cup of coffee, you know, uh, if it's a you know good cup of coffee, I, I never turn it down. Um, coffee is one of the holy trinity of beverages that is good for your health. All the evidence shows it, okay? Uh, the, the, by the way, the holy trinity, water, tea, coffee, mm. all right? So, you know, we talk about all these other beverages like fruit juices and, you know, uh, mocktails and wine and all that kind of stuff. Look, there's a holy trinity that all the evidence, okay, uh, shows that these are actually good for us. Um, uh, I love a cup of coffee. Uh, how did I come to uh, get my love of coffee is I think- You drank was, it. <laughs> well, when I was in college, I drank a lot of coffee to basically study for exams and things like that, or as I was pulling an all-nighter or coming back from a late night uh, to have a cup of coffee the next day to, to wake up so I can go to class. But I can tell you that I did a gap year, the scap year that I went to the Mediterranean. I got to Italy, it was my first destination. Everybody had a couple of espresso in the morning, all right? And so I just did what the locals do, like went in Rome, literally, all right? And I, I just, got into it. I, I wasn't doing it for the pick-me-up. I wasn't doing it for the caffeine, but I really learned to enjoy the taste. Coffee's been drank so long by humans, we can't even find the written history of its origin. Hmm. Probably came in Ethiopia a long time ago, coffee beans. And of course, now you have you know famous blends and bean varieties and all that kind of stuff. Here's what I would tell you about coffee. We do know that coffee has a lot of natural bioactives from the bean. One of them is chlorogenic acid. I've done a lot of study on that. Chlorogenic acid lowers inflammation, for sure, okay? You can start your morning with an anti-inflammatory beverage. It doesn't contribute calories if you don't add sugar or dairy to it or other milk. Great, now you've actually done something good for yourself straight up. It does have caffeine. Some people are sensitive to caffeine. You can have the decaffeinated coffee, all right? You still get a little bit of the bioactives. Um, uh, uh, and of course, there are individuals who are very sensitive to caffeine for whom coffee isn't going to be a good choice. Maybe not even tea. All right. But we're not talking, you know, like this is where you're talking about those people on social media who, uh, uh, you know, they want to pick a battle <laughs> and they go out and they're like, oh, it's bad for the adrenal. Maybe for somebody it's bad for the adrenals. But for most people, my adrenals working just fine. I've drank a heck of a lot of coffee in my time. All right. And I'm a doctor, so I can talk about adrenals in a very uh, informed and expert sort of way. I'm telling you, coffee is just fine. If you got a problem with your adrenals, you probably have other things you need to be careful about eating as well, not just coffee, mm. all right? And you should work with your doctor to figure out what those things actually are. You might need a personal nutritionist. That's personalized medicine. Coffee, universally, I, I think it's it's just something that has been consumed for so long. It, there's, no, there's no real controversy as a general healthy beverage. Lowers inflammation, um, slows down, we're talking about longevity, slows down the burn rate of your telomeres, all right, so your telomeres are the protective caps on the end of your chromosomes. That's your genetic material, all right? And these uh, protective caps are like the caps on the end of your shoelace, right, to prevent your shoelace from unraveling. And so your D our DNA is protected by these hard caps like the, like the shoelace caps, um, and uh, they're called telomeres. And, cough, and when over, life, over our lifetime, these caps burn down just like in your shoelace. Now, what happens when your shoelace that cap comes off? Man, your shoelace is shot. It starts to fray, yeah. Fray, okay. Now you're now when it comes out, you can't even get it back in. <laughs> it's a real pain, all right? Um, so coffee slows down the cellular aging at the level of the telomere burn. Hey, not so bad first thing in the morning for something that a lot of people drink as well. Chlorogenic acid in coffee also improves your metabolism straight out of the gate. You get up in the morning, you might skip breakfast, but still have a cup of coffee. You still haven't broken your intermittent fast overnight. You're just expending, extending it, but now you're getting some of the good stuff with a cup of joe. All right? And so these are, for all these reasons, it burns down harmful body fat, turns on your brown fat to burn down the excess harmful visceral fat. Another example of good coffee. And then what about for uh, cognitive function? <clears throat> Caffeine clearly improves cognitive function. Now, caffeine is, it's a, it's a chemical that 
in excess can actually have its problems, all right? Um, uh, like you don't want to go to a chemical supply house and order a, a, a big bottle of caffeine and start to start to consume it like no good, all right? But in natural substances like uh, uh, coffee, um, you can moderate how much caffeine you're getting by the way the coffee has been processed, processed, okay? If you, uh, like people who take away the caffeine, they can process it in a way that uh, removes some of the caffeine. Decaffeinated coffee, by the way, is not zero caffeine. It's mm. impossible to remove it all. Um, uh, and, and if you have a water decaffeinated process, it's a lot healthier than a solvent process because there's no solvent um, residue that's left. All right. Again, this is like a little fine detail. You do your research to figure out how any brand decaffeinates their coffee. If you want to decaf, is it done by water or done by solvents? petroleum products, all right, you'll get a better sense. You get to choose. We get to choose as consumers. Yeah, it's amazing. Right? And it also tastes a hell of a lot better, too. You're decaffeinated right. Decaffeinated coffee that's been decaffeinated by, I think it's called the Swiss water process. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Yeah, it, it, it's it's uh, it's uh, all, essentially, I would say it's almost as satisfying as a, as a natural cup of caffeinated coffee because of the taste, the taste profile. It hasn't been changed. The taste profile hasn't been changed with the presence of solvents, which are also, by the way, those solvents are so powerful, they're also gonna leach away some of the other bioactives that you actually want. So water decaffeination is a kinder, gentler way, preserves the flavor, also preserves the polyphenols in coffee. So the chlorogenic acid in coffee, good for your brain. Brain health, the caffeine, also good for performance, like sharpness, cognition, problem solving, attention span, those are all good. Now, coffee is a great way of getting caffeine, much better than your uh, your energy drinks, yeah. <laughs> okay? You know, I mean, look, uh, I believe in, you know, uh, uh, free enterprise. So in a free world, you can people can make anything they want, right? But that's what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, on this podcast, how do we make good choices that are practical, that are smart, that are just informed, uh, they're not difficult to do. Hmm. Hey, if you like that video, you need to check out this one here and I'll see you there.